Welcome to the Hallmarkies podcast. I am film critic Rachel Wagner, and I'm here to do another one of our Hallstar interviews. And we have a new fresh face to Hallmark today that we're talking with, we're talking to, to Chaley Rose. And thank you so much, Chaley, for coming on the podcast. Hi, thank you so much for having me. Yeah, that's great. So what we like to do with our guests is we like to give you a chance to introduce yourself and tell us uh, what inspired you to become an actress. Well, great. I'm Chaley Rose. I am an actress. <laughs> um, I'm from small town Indiana, and I always had this dream to be started with commercials. And my mom actually let me have free reign over the, um, what we called then a camcorder. So my friends and I were always recording sketches that we would make up or dance routines. There was a lot of like Aww. SNL type sketches uh -huh. to find those in the archives. So I don't know. I just always had this dream to be on the big screen. Yeah. So were you particularly into sort of comedy type thing? I loved, I was, I loved SNL Saturday mm -hmm. Night Live. And so um, I don't think that our sketches were particularly funny, <laughs> but they were kind of modeled off of that or uh -huh. like stop motion magic tricks. Oh, yeah. cool. Yeah. Uh, so where in Indiana are you, you from? I'm from Columbus, Indiana. Okay. I yeah. served my mission for my church in Indiana. So, oh, where I, uh, I was all over the state. I was in, I started out in, in Angola, way up north. And, uh, and then I was in, I was at Purdue campus. I was at oh, yeah. uh, Bloomington, uh, in Indianapolis. So, oh, nice. I went to Indiana to IU. Okay. It's such, yeah. such a beautiful campus. It really is, especially in the fall. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's so many, uh, nice, beautiful, like trails and, and yeah. trees and places to go and just relax. I, I think it would be a really nice place to, to go to school. It was, it was also a lot of fun. Yeah, sure. <laughs> yeah. I kind of, uh, I told my family that I felt like, uh, Bloomington was kind of the Midwest version of Berkeley in a, yeah, that makes a super liberal bubble inside of the state of Indiana. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and uh, so that's really cool. They yeah. you also, I love the fact that whenever they need any place to be Midwest, it's in Indiana. Movies, they, it's Indiana. <laughs> yeah. Stranger Things, A Christmas Story, um, uh, Rudy. Bad Times at El Royale. I yeah. was just watching that. The kids from Indiana. Yeah. <laughs> funny <laughs> it's so. the it's the nowhere place you know it's kind of a neutral zone yeah no it is it's just hometown if you want to be uh <laughs> if you want to capture small town americana indiana indiana is the place to yep, be yeah it is <laughs> <laughs> so you also uh, got involved in singing so uh did you kind of pursue both as a young uh, young person I, I did. I, um, when I didn't make the sixth grade cheerleading squad, which oh, was a scandal, rough. <laughs> I decided that I was going to sing the national anthem at the games. Uh -huh. um, I also did all-star cheerleading at the same time. But you know what? That was a long time ago. We're not going to get into that. But I started singing. <laughs> still the, hurts. <laughs> a little bit, I think. Uh, started singing the national anthem I just wanted to be involved um and I was there was something terrifying about doing that but that little thing that made me want to keep doing it until it wasn't terrifying yeah and so then I I got into singing and I started um I joined the choir in middle school dance choir which was the first time I learned to do harmonies and uh -huh. so I did have these two passions kind of at the same time yeah uh, that's interesting that you kind of started with uh, the national anthem because people don't realize how hard that song is to sing. It is a hard song. It does yeah. jump around a lot, yeah. uh, you know, um, in terms of high and low. And, you know, I was a kid, though. I'm sure maybe it was a little pitchy. Everyone probably forgave, 
<laughs> yeah i mean yeah it goes a full octave and uh and but we just we know it so well we don't realize that it's 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 really tough very tough it to is. sing yeah yeah that's interesting so were you in L, uh, a lot of uh, were you in plays and things like that it's and, funny you know? i in um middle school and high school i was a three sport athlete so i was a cheerleader oh. And I ran track and I was a gymnast. In middle school, I was a cheerleader, ran track and played volleyball. And I didn't do, I was in the choir in, in um, middle school, but in high school, I think that the sports kind of started to take over. Okay. But my junior year, my parents got divorced mm -hmm. and my brother, my older brother started his rebellion. And I was like, you know what? If everyone's going to rebel, so am I, <laughs> I'm going to join the show choir. <laughs> So I joined <laughs> show choir That's my funny. <laughs> junior or senior year of high school, and I auditioned for the musical my senior year, did my first and only high school musical my senior year of high school. Yeah. You are uh, such a rebel. Yeah. What did your parents <laughs> do with you? <laughs> well, you know, my mom really didn't encourage me to be in the entertainment industry. She just, sure. you, you know, anything else. Why don't you try journalism or... But, you know, this is, it was always where I just didn't have any other plans. So it just, you know, all roads mm -hmm. led to Hollywood. That's cool. Well, so yeah. what was your, your one show that you did? It was Brigadoon. Oh. And I played Meg Brocky. Nice. Yeah. That's, that's cool. I love that show. I think it it's kind fun. of underrated. You don't hear it talked about very much yeah. in like other shows. Yeah. Uh, I had a lot of fun, and the theater kids were so nice to me. Mm -hmm. This girl that came for her final year of high school to be in the musical, I had so much fun. Mm -hmm. That's really cool. That <clears throat> yeah. sounds fun. And uh, and yeah, so you sounds like you got your revenge on the uh, sixth grade cheerleading. I did. <laughs> later, later <on. laughs> I did. <laughs> so that's good. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm going to be such was, a rebel that I joined Glee Choir. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. <laughs> so, so you, so you were in Indiana. So you, then you moved. Did you just move to LA and, and I get moved, started, or how no, did that I moved happen? Straight to New York. I had oh, no York. idea how this worked, and so <laughs> I, I thought. Well, New York is the place to be. It's the place to be if you're doing musical theater, sure. really, which I didn't. That's not what I wanted to do. I wanted to get into the music industry. And so mm -hmm. I had, a, you know, I didn't, it was like dangling in the midair. I had no idea where to begin. And I had some really bad experiences with guys in the music business. It's, it's a, it can be a grimy place. And so sure, yeah. ultimately I was like, okay, I don't think this is for me. And I got into an acting class with this man, Anthony Abeson, who's a, a wonder in the city of concrete. He's just the best person I could have ended up working with. And I fell in love with acting and the learning the art of it. And I ended up, I was in New York for four years and I moved to LA uh, with a boy, my boyfriend at the time, who is a more established actor than myself. And I ended up booking a Jack in the Box commercial and I kept booking commercials. And then I got really lucky booking uh, Nashville. Yeah. It's, you know, so early on in my career. Yeah. That must have been the ideal uh, role because you got to do the music and yeah. the acting. It was like a gift from the universe because I'd mm -hmm. kind of grieved the music. You know, after New York, I'd spent some time in Atlanta and I was just like, I don't, I don't like the business side of this at all. And so Nashville came along and that, you know, a friend sent me a Facebook message saying, hey, my girlfriend's friend is on Nashville and I heard they're looking for a black actress who sings and I know you do both. Good luck. <laughs> and I copied and pasted that to my then agent, very small uh -huh. agency. And he, the next day was like, and here's your audition. And I got there on, um, I think it was a Thursday and I auditioned. And then on Friday I had a plane ticket oh and gosh. Saturday I was in Nashville. It was the most mind bending 
wonderful experience. Did you have like a, that thing you do moment where you're just like freaking out? (laughs) I kind of like, I shut down. I was just like, this isn't happening. Okay. And then you have that whole like imposter syndrome. I was like, I don't, I, I can't do this. This is ridiculous. I have no idea what I'm doing. And I didn't in a lot of ways. I was very green. I learned a lot on, on the fly. Uh Uh-huh. But I mean, all it takes, I think everybody has to have that one, one breakup because, you know, the, you have to have experience to get roles, but you have to have right. experience to get roles. Right. So <laughs> it's a tricky thing. Right. And uh, yeah. so I, I'm sure everybody can relate to that first time. Yeah. I think, I think everyone in this business can. I think some people started when they were really young mm. or had parents who did it and it didn't feel as as insane as it does to a girl from Indiana. Yeah. It's like, I cannot believe I'm actually going to be on TV. I just couldn't believe it. Yeah. Now, do you try to bring some of that comedy that you can into roles? Uh, since that was sort of what you started out really enjoying. Oh, all the time. I, all the time. I feel like it's kind of just my point of view. I mean, I go out for a lot of things that are dramatic, but anytime there's an opportunity which I feel there were several in both of these Christmas movies to kind of find the funny. Uh huh. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's fun for me. I'm looking forward to that for sure. Uh, so what is, is it challenging and we'll talk about this with Christmas to what, but is it challenging to sing as part of a, uh, a, a television show like Nashville? Uh, you have to, obviously you record the songs and it's not done live so right is that kind of hard to 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 get that dynamic no it was great you do you do playback so we'd go in the studio we'd get a song we'd have a day or two to learn it um and record which was such a great part of that process anyway the guy who buddy miller produced Uh everything i did and he's amazing if you don't know him look him up he's like the king of americana and such a lovely human And so it's just another part of that experience I couldn't believe I was having. Uh And then anytime you would do a performance, it was just, you'd get three clicks so that you felt the tempo before the song came in and you just do playback and you kind of, I always sang along and tried to match my breathing or whatever so that it could work for continuity when they cut the scene together. A lot of fun. Yeah, that's so cool. Do you yeah. have to do a twang in a uh, in Nashville? No, I, it's funny. My first episode, the day before I started shooting, they were like, "They want you to have a southern accent." And I was like, "Oh my, what?" <laughs> and so my first episode of Nashville, I have this terrible southern accent. And then after that, they were like, let's phase, let's phase it out. <laughs> yeah, let's I'm surprised more people haven't noticed the casual like phase out to a more neutral, slightly Southern, which I think is my natural accent anyway, because I'm from Southern Indiana, you know, like yeah. an hour and a half out of Kentucky. So right. that I can do. <laughs> um, but I, you know, I was in a group that was more of an Americana band and we didn't sing with a Southern twang. We got to sing pretty straight yeah that's really cool yeah uh so let's talk first about this holiday heist film and yeah we'll talk about the hallmark one so can you tell us a little bit about we don't know much about this movie can you tell us a little bit about what it what it is yeah this is a it it follows kind of the same pattern that a lot of the hallmark movies follow i'm uh the owner of a jewelry store that i own with my family And it's in a struggling black neighborhood in Chicago that's being gentrified and we're just Mm. fighting to stay alive. It was my mother's passion. She's passed on at this point. And a man comes in, he's fresh out of prison to hold the place up. You know, he's sizing up the space and he's going to pull a a heist, but you know, love got in the way. We'll see what happens. (laughs) (laughs) Some things go wrong. Uh-huh. Some things go right. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds fun. I mean, just the name, it sounds like it's going to be a little bit funny, but. It's it's definitely funny. Uh-huh. Um, 
maybe in ways that aren't intended to be, but it's funny. <laughs> hey, as long as you're laughing, who cares, right? Yeah. Uh, I had a lot of fun shooting it. These things, they can be a little exhausting if you're number one on the call sheet because you're in every day, all day. Sure. Yeah. 15 day shoot, but it's always worth it. In the yeah. End. Uh, was, uh, was, it, was this one filmed in the summer? This was filmed in end of March through mid April in Chicago. Okay. Oh, so it's still cold. Uh huh. Yeah, so that's good. Yeah, and you're not dying of <laughs> in ninety no, degree weather anything, in Vancouver. I was cold, right? Uh huh. In Vancouver, for me, I live in LA, so I have thinned out Southern California blood. I was still kind of cold in Vancouver. Yeah. In July. Oh well, that's good because that can be rough when you're like you you have this this coat on and everything and. Uh, yeah <laughs> there were a lot of overcast some rainy days so it was fine I was happy with the coat most of the time oh, there were, you know yeah uh-huh. yeah so how did you end up getting both roles did you just audition or uh... those were both actually offered to me which nice. is a great compliment as an actor mm-hmm. um yeah when a casting director is like I think this girl is good for this yeah. Um, so that's how I got both of those. And by the time I'd finished holiday high, so I was like, I'm done with Christmas. <laughs> and then I get a call a month later about a Hallmark Christmas movie. And I was like, well, here we go. Guess not. Yeah. I guess get, I'm not. You get to celebrate Christmas three times. Yeah. They have three Christmas seasons this year. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I wonder that sometimes about the Hallmark actors that it's like they get to actual Christmas and they're like, yeah, "Mm, I'll pass. (laughs) Yeah. That's how I felt. That was like, I'm not celebrating Christmas this year. (laughs) I wonder like the Terrell Rotheries. I don't know if she did multiple uh, Christmas movies. She was in mine. Lucky me. I love her. (laughs) Yeah. She's, uh, she's, she's a a legend in Hallmark movies. She's so funny. Uh I, I yeah. broke character a lot working with Terrell. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Who did in she's in Christmas duet with you? Yeah. Or yeah. So did you know any of your co-stars in Holiday Heist? I didn't. Yeah. Um, I met Tobias for the first time when I got there. And then the rest of the cast were a bunch of great Chicago actors. Oh, nice. Yeah. yeah. That's nice that it's not Vancouver pretending to be Chicago. Yeah. Which is often the case. <laughs> this was just Vancouver pretending to be like New England, which is fine. <laughs> in duet. Yeah. Yeah. In that's good. Duet. Yeah. That's often you have, well, you have a lot of Vancouver pretending to be, uh, to be New York and then Chicago mm. and then Vancouver pretending to be Vermont. <laughs> that's the Christmas yeah, mine variety. Is Vermont. <laughs> yeah, of course. <laughs> so in Christmas duet, y- you, play a singer that had been part of a a duo right yes and it had fallen on hard times despite a christmas hit is that right well really we just had different plans for our careers and so mm-hmm. i went my way and he went his yeah you forget that that's the thing is mm-hmm. our hallmark heroines forgetting the hometown yeah how great hometown is <laughs> <laughs> yeah. we always say that you can't be a good person in the city in a hallmark <laughs> movie unless you are running a parade or mm. a window designer those are oh. the two allowed oh, careers okay <laughs> i did city. not know that yeah uh, <laughs> Occ- well. oc- occasionally you'll have a good person that's like a miracle on 34th street kind of thing uh-huh. you know like running into a department store <laughs> right but, but that's 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 usually a person who's lost their way and needs of to of course and needs, needs to, to go back to the small town <laughs> christmas it's so yeah. funny yeah and it's like they're and they're usually dating a bad man of business at the beginning oh of course <laughs> and they have to they have to go back and find their high school boyfriend and <laughs> <laughs> it's really good uh, uh, i feel like we we broke the mold a little bit yeah because I found a home away from home that uh-huh. isn't actually my hometown. Oh, that's one. good. Yeah. Yeah. That is good. Uh, so 
so yeah so you guys have gone your separate ways is there kind of a, a little bit of bitterness that the duo broke up i think that maybe i don't know if bitterness is the word mm -hmm. there's it's um i think that we both still carry a torch for one another and now jesse's off pursuing a solo career which i think he's fine with it's not going great yeah because they request our christmas song year round right at his concerts i know <laughs> of course who wouldn't i mean come who on who wouldn't <laughs> yeah it would be the first of my requests for sure <laughs> Uh, so yeah so what brings you back to this brings you to the small town well actually I don't know if this is a little bit of a spoiler I think though that for my character for Avery there's something about constantly being on the road that left yeah. her longing for home a uh -huh. place to call home and so I create that for myself yeah that's that's interesting yeah so he just and he's there and it looked really cute i thought the clip looked really cute the banter Thank you. between Which you guys one? i i can't even remember what <laughs> i can't even remember what it was but i remember just like this is cute they seem Thanks. to have a cute dynamic together we you know it and we really do in real life kind of got along mostly well. it's him nagging me and me <laughs> laughing but there was we had a lot of fun uh-huh yeah that's cool did you guys get to have a uh there's a yuletide festival i guess according to the summary we did was that fun to to get to see hallmark it, create a festival it out really of was yeah <laughs> it was like all of the fake snow and then it's kind of like you believe you're cold now because there's snow on the ground even though it was 70 degrees and they have, I mean, they have a way of throwing together a cute little festival in a pinch yeah. with a horse and everything. Yeah. If they ever needed anybody to actually throw on a spur of the moment festival, they should call Hallmark. They should. They, they absolutely should. should. Like, all right. This one was really cute. Yeah. That's cool. And, and so you guys sing a little bit in the movie? We do. Um, he, you know, convinces me to get back up there. Oh, that'll be good. That's yeah. Right good. Uh, <laughs> did you enjoy singing the like Christmas carols? And Christmas I Christmas songs? love Christmas music. Mm. I love it. Yeah. So it it is fun for me. I I actually need to see if I can get a copy of that song to add to my Christmas playlist. Yeah, that would be fun for sure yeah is it weird for you to hear yourself singing when you not listen at all. to it yeah at this point definitely not i don't know how many songs i did on nashville but uh -huh. um no i love it actually yeah. it's weird it's more weird maybe watching myself yeah um depending on the context of what i'm doing yeah i know yeah. a lot of actors struggle with that with uh with watching yeah them. I learned to be kind to myself because when I first did Nashville, I would, I was super critical and I would watch and I would watch it one time and go, okay, now let's watch it and be neutral and supportive of ourselves. Yeah. Um, and so mostly I've learned to like, you know, be kind to myself. It's, mm -hmm. it's a weird thing to do to watch yourself on TV. Yeah. Well, I've, you know, just listening to the podcast, uh, it, well, it's like two things can happen. If I, I'll listen to it and I'll notice the flaws like that other right. people, like I'll notice, oh, why did I keep saying um, or you know, <laughs> I, I try to edit, edit it out as much as I could or try to make it better. But then I also remember I have a certain degree of nostalgia that probably makes me less objective than, because of, oh, right. that was such a fun time with so-and-so right. or that was such a cool experience getting to talk to so-and-so that i maybe i'm not the most objective of my own work <laughs> i think so also people listening to podcasts we get used to listening to people it's nor it's real i love podcasts i love real conversation there's a lot of stammering and repeating themselves and saying um yeah. it's fine yeah 
yeah it can always get better but yeah i uh yeah i appreciate it when it feels like people are coming from an authentic place and not versus reading a script yeah or, or being yeah. phony and if you're not somebody who like there's definitely people that i feel like are sort of corporate people that yeah you know that kind of like a I, politician <laughs> yeah and <laughs> yeah. and i guess that that's that's fine but i prefer the more sort of authentic uh feels like i'm talking to the person kind of approach uh, is more what i like but yeah it's it's been it's been really really cool to get to talk to so many neat people and and hear their stories and and uh, i think that's my favorite favorite part but but i don't know i just enjoy the whole experience so much it's sometimes hard for me to be like oh i could have done i could have done it better i don't know it's that's like I'm very a, i feel like that's very healthy then yeah. that's good <laughs> well that's good <laughs> so we like to end our interviews with what we can have some fun questions okay so all right this is the holiday edition of the got it years. okay so first question what is your favorite holiday drink oh this is, i'm not an eggnog eggnog, or... eggnog person yeah i i like like a an apple cider but i like it to have like some rum in it or something <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> spicy yeah, yeah. Okay. spiked apple cider yeah Did so say that on this podcast <laughs> yeah, yeah of course so uh what is your favorite holiday cookie or treat my mom makes every year rolled sugar cookies she's been doing this for my whole life and then she'll melt a bowl of milk chocolate and a bowl of white chocolate. And then we, once the cookies cool, you can like dip them or drizzle them or do half and half or oh, yeah. they're so good. And we do it every year. And by the, you know, at a certain point you get tired of them because you've eaten a bunch of cookie dough and a bunch of cookies. And by next Christmas, you're ready for them again. Yeah. <laughs> so you're yeah you're ready for a hallmark movie if you <laughs> make yeah. cookies on i know Christmas. <laughs> yeah uh they do have oh man i miss some of the food in indiana yeah uh, the, like the pork tender. Like little things like that people don't understand yes right? like putting marshmallows on candy dams stuff right. like that yeah yeah I love, well, I love steak and shake and I know that's not just Indiana, yeah. but the, but the, it's definitely there having the whole, um, spaghetti with chili on top, like delicious. Why? It's so great. <laughs> it's so good. And <laughs> cracker like, barrel. Yeah. <laughs> the steak and shake shakes are the best because they're like they the are. perfect consistency. They they're are. not too thick that you need like a spoon, but they're not too thin, like an in and out right. shake or something like that. They're probably the best. Five thousand calories, but it's yeah. worth it. And the frozen custard in Indiana. Oh, oh my gosh! There was a place called Ritter's. It's not oh, there yeah. anymore. Oh, it's gone. Yeah, so well, in sad. my hometown at least. I don't know if it exists in other places, but I would leave school some oh. days and go get like a scoop of vanilla with peanut butter and hot fudge on it oh. and cookie dough. That's the kind of stuff you do when yeah. you're seventeen years old. Yeah, I. Guess. I I lived for six months in uh, right by the Speedway, I literally in Speedway uh, oh, wow. in, in, in Indianapolis. And oh, uh, yeah, those are the best. And uh, the uh, uh, I love the pork tenderloin sandwiches. And they're oh, yeah. pounded down. And oh, man. There was a the gas best. station, I think, in like Brown County that was, that was the place to go to get a pork tenderloin sandwich. I don't remember what it's oh. called. But it's Yum. just some little random, yeah, not a chain, right? But like a gas station, yeah. <laughs> and the the whole making homemade noodles thing that they do there, I mean, I know other places make homemade noodles, but the very first meal I had in Indiana was the uh, was the homemade noodles and chicken and noodles over yes. mashed potatoes, the whole like starch on starch yes. on starch, and it is so good. <laughs> i love it and, yep. uh yeah and in fact in one of the congregations that i was working at they decided to do this fundraiser to help the the young women uh be able to go to camp and so they had all of these 
<laughs> these women making their homemade noodles and then they were going to sell sell the you know the dried noodles and it came to, ended up being this huge kind of mess because the women oh, got no. super competitive over well my noodles <laughs> are better than your noodles and so they had to just put a stop to it after a while because it was, that is hilarious isn't that was so funny <laughs> i'm like ladies calm down this is for a good cause ladies yes <laughs> but That's yeah funny. people were very uh, man, it's so good <laughs> anyway <laughs> so what is your favorite christmas song or carol well my favorite christmas song is probably last christmas by wham uh-huh or um all i want for christmas is you from oh, Carey. nice okay. but i recorded have yourself a merry little christmas uh, on a nashville album which is nice that's I my favorite that's my favorite like secular christmas song i yeah I love, uh, my favorite spiritual christmas carol is a what child is this i love that song i think it's so beautiful pretty. song yeah but have, have yourself a merry little christmas is so it's so melancholy i know i really do love the melancholy kind yeah. of christmas songs because i have felt that way so many yeah. times sure yeah yeah i it, well especially if you've seen meet me in st louis then it's especially you get I that haven't. melancholy i so i i because that's where the song was originally written for oh was for mimi in st louis and uh judy garland is singing it to her sister uh, who's just kind of had a panic attack basically because she doesn't want to move and they're really sad about having to move and uh so it's it's quite it's it's, it's a quite an affecting scene so wow. i recommend it it's really good i'll put that on the list yeah definitely i mean it has tons of good songs it's got the trolley song which is fun from judy uh and um meet me in st louis of course and it's it's a really good good musical and uh, but anyway i love it and i also i mean the first time i ever heard have yourself a merry little christmas was uh on the uh the christmas eve at sesame street which which is great i have and not seen that <laughs> you should see it because it's so good i'm not even being ironic here i legitimately <laughs> love it and uh, there's the whole uh scene where bernie where ernie and bert <laughs> have this whole gift of the magi thing oh, uh, where, <laughs> it's so cute. and then they sing have yourself a merry little christmas it's the best okay i'll have to put that on the list yeah. too because i also love the muppets um those aren't muppets i know yeah but no, the they, muppets um are they yeah they're muppets they're just Sesame are they Street jim muppets. henson characters yeah yeah they're oh jim i didn't henson. know that yeah like kermit was originally oh yeah oh yeah um the muppet version of uh Christmas what is Carol? it yes yeah, i love so that good. yeah it's so good in fact there's another one called uh a uh what's it a fam a muppet family christmas or something like that anyway it's you should find it because it has the only movie or show that has all the sesame street characters the muppets characters muppet babies and fraggle rock wow all in one movie that's intense it's really yes <laughs> you should you should check it out anyway <laughs> very good uh well going into that what is your favorite christmas movie okay this is tough and i know that i'm gonna get off the phone and be like dang it i love <laughs> elf yeah it's really funny and there's something else on the edge of my brain that is my favorite christmas movie though Oh, I love, um, I don't know if this is technically a Christmas movie. What's the Hugh Grant? Why can't I think I of it? Love Actually? Yes. Yeah. I oh, definitely. love that movie. That definitely counts. Yeah. It's, it's so good. So good. <laughs> so what is your favorite holiday tradition? Like decorating the tree or I think it's whatever making you do. cookies with my mom. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. Good. All right. Uh, what's a memorable Christmas gift you've given or received? did you have your red rider bb gun moment as a kid the gift that you really wanted uh, there was the easy bake oven moment uh, a great moment <laughs> you got to make some light bulb food yeah and i made a lot of <laughs> disgusting cakes and brownies that my daddy 
<laughs> That's so funny. So <laughs> gross. <laughs> uh, so which do you prefer, Scrooge or the Grinch? I'm going to have to go with ooh, Scrooge just because I love that story. Yeah, me too. But uh, I love Jim Carrey as the Grinch. Oh, yeah. That's your favorite? Yeah. That's cool. Uh, yeah, he's he's pretty spastic. Yeah. <laughs> pretty crazy. Uh, so, clear lights or colored? Ooh, clear. Mm-hmm. Okay. Clear Would you lights. rather be in a snowball fight or build a snowman? I'd rather build a snowman. Okay, good. Uh, would you consider yourself a good gift wrapper or not? No. Average. <laughs> I don't, you know, I'm like, they're going to rip this open anyway. I'm not going to make this perfect. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> i'm not the best either i'll be honest <laughs> sometimes i just re- revert to the gift bag or the bag yeah 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 all right uh what is your do you have an ugly christmas sweater and if I so do. what is it i have a few actually because i love i love any sort of dress-up party halloween yeah. themed birthday so i have this i found this big red bejeweled sweater at the thrift store but as I was leaving I saw these huge bows I mean it's like a foot wide like silver bows that are meant to go on a wreath I sewed that onto my sweater Uh (laughs) so I have this massive bow on the front of a really ugly sweater but I also have I bought I think two or three there were just they were all just laid before me of these velvet vests with one oh has gosh. embroidered snowmen on it yeah and the other one i think has ice skates and like gloves and hats and embro- they're hideous <laughs> so See, i'm just hoping yeah. that i get invited to several ugly sweater parties so that i can do the turtleneck vest look yeah and but- the sweater <laughs> Chaley's friends, you need to get on this <laughs> and you need to have her yes. ugly Christmas sweater. Please and thank you. That sounds amazing. Yeah, because that's like the legit way to do it. Like Genuine they're, they're not made sweater. to be ironically ugly. Like these were made to be pretty. Yeah. But they're ugly. I went to I went to a party where they were giving away a bunch of like a brand, like they had made manufactured ugly yeah. christmas sweaters not, not as good like it's like the halloween costume in a bag thing it's just not the same as making your own yeah you know yeah yeah when you're putting like bows terrible bows on your own sweater way better way or when better. you find a sweater that someone's grandma wore in the 80s in a way that she thought she was really rocking a great christmas sweater yeah those are, those are i completely agree yeah. <laughs> well, very good. You passed the test. Thank you. <laughs> you can keep making thank Hallmark you. movies. <laughs> thank you very much. <laughs> well, thank you so much for coming on the podcast to talk with us. Thank this you. was a lot of fun. I really enjoyed it. And so do you have a uh, social media or anything you'd like to share? Yeah. My Twitter and my Instagram are both at Chaley Rose. Um, C H A L E Y R O S E. Great. Well, yeah. I will uh, have that all in the description section so people can make sure to follow you. Great. I look forward to both of your movies. It's going to be Thank you fun. so much. So, all right. Well, we will uh, we will hopefully be in touch and thank yeah. you again. And uh, Merry Christmas everybody. Merry Christmas. Thank you for having me. I'd like to thank Chaley for coming on the podcast. This was so much fun to talk with her and you can follow me at Rachel's Reviews all of our social media on iTunes, YouTube and on Ron Tomatoes, so make sure you check that out and also follow the podcast at Hallmarkies Pod and Hallmarkies Podcast all over social media and on iTunes and YouTube. And if you're listening on iTunes, please give us your ratings and reviews. And if you're listening on YouTube, please give us a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel. We sure appreciate that. And consider becoming a patron of our channel. We have a lot of fun with our patron group on Facebook. And then we also have giveaways and exclusives and other fun stuff. We definitely try to make it worth your while to be a patron. So check that out. All the information will be in the description section. We also have our merch store, which has tons of all holiday designs so perfect for the holiday movie watching fan the hallmark fan the hardy in your life the link will be in the description for that as well so thanks so much and we'll talk to y'all later merry christmas